Hello, everybody. My name is Yuri Spadarenko, and uh, here today I represent uh, the largest independent uh, private bank in Latvia, ABLB Bank. Uh, I'll uh, run through the brief uh, story how we implemented uh, such funny thing as uh, end user monitoring. Uh, but uh, first of all, I'd uh, like to say that I'm really happy to see that growth this year is just as big as all the previous years. and and the community is growing, and uh, as a local guy from Latvia, I'm really proud that uh, we are, at least in some fields in information technologies, like uh, leading the world, at least amongst the leaders. Uh, we had like for a years uh, micro tick in hardware, and now that there's Zabbix in software, so I want to thank Zabbix team for the, such a great product. Uh, well, about the end user monitoring. Uh, as I said, my name is Yuri. Uh, just uh, like the first man in space. So about myself, um, I'm an engineer. Uh, studied in Riga, Riga Technical University. Um, about the free time, I like sports in particular and uh, everything that uh, incorporates moving around. Like I like running, I like driving my car, uh, riding, like riding horses and uh, riding a bike, like, I hope pronunciation is right. I like the right horse. Uh, and the ri about the riding bike, uh, recently I had an incident. Uh, uh, long story short, well, I fell off <laughs> my bike and uh, first thought, lying on the ground, hmm, funny, if I'm gonna make this year a conference. <laughs> so that much how I like the Zabbix. Okay. Um, I've been working uh, in uh, Latvenergo, it's the uh, biggest uh, energy company in Latvia. There as well I was uh, uh, administrator of Zabbix, as well as developing operator, sort of three in one. Now I am uh, lucky enough to work in a cool bank. Uh, YABLV is cool because, I don't know, it's for the lucky people. <laughs> Why so? Because uh, when our clients are parking, they're Jaguars and Maseratis and <laughs> entering the bank, they look quite happy. Uh, so, I am a certified specialist. Um, uh, thank you, Richards. <laughs> so, and um, what I do in a bank, uh, basically uh, I am responsible for virtualization systems, uh, Oracle VM in particular, and mostly I uh, do the Zabbix and the monitoring uh, uh, overall. So, um, when I, wa I got the job, the bank was just deciding on, uh, on what uh, kind of monitoring system to implement. Uh, so, about the bank itself. Uh, as I said, currently it's the largest bank, private independent bank in Latvia. We have uh, uh, representatives all over the globe. Basically, those are the CIS countries, as well as uh, subsidiary uh, companies like real estates and all that stuff that banks uh, usually have. So, the main thing is that uh, we are still teenage bank. We are 19 now, and uh, on September 17th, we are becoming uh, 20 years, I'd say, young, uh, compared to those dinosaurs of banking world, but uh, our country regained the uh, independency like 22 years ago, so we are kind of old bank. So, what to monitor in bank? Um, basically, is that important to monitor banking systems? Uh, let's see. They say uh, your money have to work for you. If the credit card system goes down, what's that gonna happen? Basically, if our client is like, I don't know, at a dinner with his girlfriend and uh, he cannot pay for the dinner, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's gonna be a little bit angry and we'll have a little bit, bit, bit of big problems. So, the banking systems, basically what the bankers are doing, uh, they are letting your money to work. And uh, banking systems like broker systems, they should be available like 24-7. Uh, as well as e-banking systems and uh, uh, payment gateways, uh, clearing systems, of course, because uh, uh, even if you 
are, I don't know, buying something and the money is not flowing between the banks, you are in a big trouble. So, as well the, as the client lines, uh, call centers, database as well, I think nobody needs those. Uh, okay, security systems, of course. And um, so, our monitoring infrastructure, it's uh, in numbers and facts. I believe we are kind of media core sized uh, infrastructure, about uh, 100 hosts. Let's see, about 40 items per host and 14, 15 triggers per host. But basically, it's like uh, a lot of hosts has, let's say, 20 items and a lot of hosts has few hundreds of items. Uh, values per second, you can see it's about a half thousand, so uh, not that big uh, infrastructure. So we have a development and testing environment, uh, as well as we are using uh, Arabics and a lot of custom database scripts. Uh, I like the presentation uh, about <laughs> uh, Arabics. Arabics. It was, yeah, right? It, kind of interesting thing, because um, uh, there is a lot of problems with Arabics. It's a great tool. We are using it for um, gathering information and st statistics and uh, like uh, uh, seeing what's going on with our databases, like plotting on uh, long term. But uh, if we need uh, something uh, uh, like uh, to monitor really crucial about uh, database, we are writing our own scripts uh, to make it kind of bulletproof solution. So uh, we have production server and uh, Zabbix proxies, SNMPTT still, because uh, we are running uh, still 1.8 latest uh, version of the branch, and uh, we have to rewrite a lot of uh, custom stuff uh, for the database of the uh, version 2.0 because uh, a lot of stuff uh, we have written is working directly with database. I'm uh, changing it to 2.0 or to use the API, uh, which is kind of a nice tool. So we have integration with the service and project management system, uh, which is kind of, kind of nice and interesting stuff. Um, let's see, Zabbix is uh, generating uh, incidents. Uh, automatically in those systems and uh, making like work orders for the engineers and staff. Let's say uh, Zabbix is writing to some uh, staff member, go and change the printer's cartridge because it's almost empty, etc. As well as we are reporting uh, uh, from the Zabbix for enterprise resource planning. So basically the Zabbix is taking part in uh, resource management. This is kind of interesting that uh, like system or machine is already like commanding people to do something. <laughs> so uh, here's our infrastructure. It's simplified graphics um, to see that uh, we are really trying to keep it uh, keys like keep it simple and stupid. So uh, basically, what you can see here, uh, we have Zabbix server with uh, some custom PHP uh, graphical user interface, SNMPTT on the one machine and uh, Zabbix uh, proxies with Orabix on the other machines. Uh, uh, I stripped out all the uh, high availability stuff and everything just to see that the main installation is almost the default. Uh, only things are like, I don't know, these, these interface scripts with the corporate management system. Our staff likes to use uh, screens a lot. In previous company, um, we were more like uh, based on uh, messaging, like emails and SMS. This time, operators and administrators in ABL VBank, they like to see uh, data. And uh, either those are graphics, screens, or uh, maps, but uh, uh, some uses dashboard, uh, but uh, uh, operators really like to see data. So, uh, we have a SMS gateway, but uh, basically, uh, it's uh, just the uh, graphical interpretation of data, what they are interested in. Basically, if disaster happens, then we are sending SMSs only situation. So, the vision about monitoring. When I was hired, um, basically in bank, nah, there was tested, I believe, well, a lot of systems. Like, some of them was even, uh, were even uh, based on SNMP protocols uh, entirely, and uh, 
some other local uh, monitoring systems, uh, uh, some HP uh, systems, I believe Network Node Manager and something like this. But uh, if you know those systems, they're like no way as good as Zabbix. So uh, I had already experience for four years. I was working professionally with, with Zabbix uh, at an uh, energy company and I uh, remember Zabbix since it's a 1.1 version, so I, I already knew uh, Zabbix quite well. So I said that we should stick uh, with uh, this system. So this is our um, vision of uh, monitoring, basically the magic triangle. Um, there's a hardware monitoring as the base uh, applications and uh, this uh, end user monitoring which I'm going to uh, tell you about today. So basically, without uh, a hardware and application monitoring, uh, end user experience monitoring basically has no use. Uh, let's see. Those three levels, infrastructure monitoring or the hardware monitoring, it's like server health, network devices, peripheral devices, etc. Uh, we are pinging, um, getting some useful information. Application level monitoring, we are looking for uh, some processes down uh, if logs are written and uh, getting SNMP traps from the applications, uh, from the hardware, of course, as well, but from applications as well. Um, at the moment, I knew that Zabbix is capable, capable of those things, so I said we stick with Zabbix. Um, what about end user monitoring? Uh, what do we think with uh, end user monitoring? Uh, it's, uh, oh, sorry. Basically, it's not uh, monitoring of users when they use applications. There is such a methodology when you are developing systems, you sometimes need to monitor how user interacts with the screen and the mouse and everything. But now this time it means uh, we have to uh, monitor application it, uh, itself if it's running. So uh, there was the initial problem. If everything's working like servers are up, we can ping them uh, all the processes are started, like network is okay, users have access, but service is not available for the users. Why? Uh, let's say we have run out of licenses, as uh, I mentioned here. So it's a usual situation that something got wrong. Well, okay, we don't have to run out of licenses, but things happen. So we needed a tool to uh, monitor it. Basically, I was... Uh, really concerned about what can we do about this because uh, all we have done till that was writing scripts to try to simulate something from the user end but now uh, we understood that we need a full time end user monitoring so what does it do what does end user monitoring do uh, let's say uh, the, the bank hired the guy who is uh, sitting like 24 7 he has uh, writes to all, work with all the systems in the bank. He opens the system, does some transactions, or uh, saves some files or something, what the system does. Uh, he has stopwatch, he looks at how much time does it take, writes it down, and after that, when all the systems are tested, he sends it to Zabbix, with Zabbix sender, let's say. So, but uh, then I realized that uh, I was the one who was hired at the bank to implement the monitoring, and guess who would have to do this all? So I, <laughs> I quickly realized that I have to find somebody, somebody else to do it for me. Uh, but uh, this kind of person should be, I don't know, unique kind of Superman, because uh, first he, uh, he won't get a big salary, because I'll have to pay him from my pocket. So he have to have some IT knowledges, and uh, he have to have, uh, has to have uh, insomnia because he will work 24-7. Well, uh, after a few minutes uh, <laughs> of thinking, I realized that the, the guy should be a robot. Uh, even if he is, I don't know, vacuum, cl vacuum cleaner, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, unless he can work with those systems and uh, he, uh, this robot is able to uh, run all the applications uh, that our user are running, uh, and uh, run applications from user perspective, uh, not like scripts does, but really running application and looking what uh, what is going on. Uh, uh, this robot have to uh, 
run on the OS, uh, which uh, our users are using, like uh, Windows and uh, Linux, uh, the same platform and browser. Well, uh, he will have to time every step because we have to know how much time uh, does it take to do some operations in system if everything is okay because uh, users will call you and tell that your system is a snail and go do something. We have to know this before the users notice the slowdown. So here, this system should uh, time the steps of the running these applications. So the system should handle uh, some exceptions, like uh, pop-up errors uh, of uh, noticing that there are no licenses or, or some other errors, like, I don't know, Windows, uh, Windows has a lot of errors, so <laughs> there could be errors. Uh, so it has uh, to collect useful information about these errors. So administrators should know what happened, why this system uh, didn't uh, uh, successfully run the test. So, and send those uh, data and inf information to Zebex. So uh, as well, the system must be easy to implement, must be easy to maintain, because I have to do it, uh, must be quick to learn, and uh, notify administrators. So that's it. Uh, but uh, I really uh, tried hard, looked for about, I don't know, dozen or two of systems, like all the most popular and not so popular. And uh, uh, last year I was running around in coffee breaks asking if anybody has something like this implemented, but uh, with no success. Um, after searching for a few months, um, all those systems I I was able to find that uh, could at least uh, have some of functional functionality I need. Uh, well, all those systems uh, were either expensive, a lot of them were, so either complicated. Uh, they overlap mostly, they ex uh, are, ex are expensive because they overlap uh, functionality with Zabbix. They want to do everything. But uh, as we chose the Zabbix as the core system, we needed just one functionality and uh, to integrate it, uh, it with Zabbix. Um, those systems mostly are not uh, customizable, just the built-in functions and uh, modules which you pay for. And uh, we even uh, f found uh, one uh, company at uh, England, I believe. Yes, it was at England. Um, they were uh, working at such a system when you can uh, simulate user, but uh, we were waiting very, very long. I'd say uh, Alex is good at estimations of deadlines because this guy was uh, telling us all the time that he's almost ready. And um, well, we waited, but, uh, but uh, one day I was uh, sitting with Windows group, with Windows administrators, and uh, I don't remember really recall what we were talking about, but the idea was about installations uh, in the evening. And the one guy mentioned a system called Auto8. Auto8 basically is the uh, Windows installation automation system. Uh, it just clicked. <laughs> I remember that I used it like version 2 or even version 1. I uh, used it for really clicking next, 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 finish. So you don't have to do it. So uh, I checked out. It was still alive. I, it was. I haven't seen it for a long time. And uh, here are the uh, features I found. So basically, Autoit is a system that, uh, it's a scripting language. It's e uh, really easy to script. It's kind of basic like syntax. Uh, what it does, it simulates keystrokes and uh, mouse movement. It ma manipulates windows and processes, uh, interacts with uh, standard, uh, uh, standard uh, controls like buttons. Uh, well, it's kind of funny to watch somebody seeing the mouse clicking somewhere without you. They are thinking that somebody has uh, connected to your computer through the RDP and doing something, but it's kind of funny. So basically, uh, Autoit has about, uh, already about 400 built-in functions. Uh, functions like sending uh, keystrokes, uh, checking uh, your window for I don't know, some, some changes or something. Uh, if you check out the, their uh, homepage, there is a list of the functions. Uh, scripts can be compiled, which is nice. Uh, it has uh, encryption uh, and obfuscation. 
in case if you use some swear words as your <laughs> variables. So uh, it's free of charge, now uh, completely free. It's not open source, unfortunately, but it, it's free. Uh, and it's uh, with us since 99, so it's kind of polished and then dependable system. Um, a lot of stuff as well. It's well documented and it has a large uh, community as well. So it was decided to go with the uh, outside, but I had to do some, uh, some preparations. I wrote some really simple scripts. It's uh, like the script itself, if you can see. Uh, can you read it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really simple. It's straightforward script. Uh, what happens here? It's like uh, we are setting some uh, variables. Uh, how uh, uh, our coordinate system is uh, uh, working. Uh, pixel coordinate system, uh, it's like uh, how you see the pixels. Either you see them as uh, relative to the screen, relative to the window, or uh, relative to the user space in the window, open window. The same with the, with the mouse uh, coordinate options. So uh, the next line, uh, we start uh, timer, we initialize timer. Uh, we run the, some program we are interested in. This time, this is MS Paint. Uh, uh, next line, we are waiting uh, for window to open. It's really easy, just call the functions. Those are built-in functions. I didn't write this whole stuff. So next, uh, we are sleeping for some time, just, just to, the script will uh, look legit, not too fast for human eye. So we are drawing some lines uh, here with the coordinates and uh, just uh, setting that uh, we are clicking the mouse button, which button, left button, setting coordinates, really easy. So uh, next step is uh, exiting. Uh, we call win close as well. We can uh, click the cross button as well. We can uh, simulate Alt F4 pressing, etc. So we're sending uh, uh, sending a keystroke now N. So it means that when it asks if we want to save our art artwork, we say no. And uh, next, what we do is uh, we get the difference in timer. Uh, we set in the uh, beginning of the script the timer, and now we are. Uh, getting the difference between those times. And that's what we are interested in. One of parameters in milliseconds, how long it did it take to uh, simulate this? I don't know, it, I believe it's drawing letter A or something. So, and uh, next we are just uh, calling Zabbix sender and that's it, we are sending data to Zabbix. It's really easy to integrate. So, uh, let's see. Uh, this is uh, our pilot, really simple. We just needed to check if the system is working and doing what we need. So we set up a, a really simple uh, Windows machine in a scheduler, set uh, some uh, periods of time when the, this auto script is called. Uh, and uh, it uh, runs the test application uh, on other servers. And uh, then uh, with uh, using a Zabbix sender, just sends data to Zabbix server. As well, we are logging data just for our needs because we are debugging. So that was how the, our pilot looked. And uh, what we found out, there are pros because it's really easy to script, as I mentioned. Uh, it has useful tools like, uh, like editor built in, like uh, I don't know how to call it. Uh, you know, in Pine there is a pick tool which you pick the colors. Uh, there is a pick tool when you can uh, pick the names of objects on the windows. You just open the window. Let's say it's uh, the same Pine, and uh, you d take this pick tool and uh, point to some button you want to press in the script, and it's, uh, it uh, shows you all the information about this object of the Pine window. It's really easy to script this way. So it's good at timing because it has a precision of milliseconds. Uh, it's really easy to integrate. It's just a sender. So it's, uh, it has no databases, not, has no uh, configuration files. So it, basically, if you want to set up something like this, you can go uh, away with, I don't know, two hours. You just download it, install it, and uh, that's it. So, and it, uh, of course, can detect the non-standard situations like uh, 
timeout, uh, some some random Windows pops up, like Windows update or something, and uh, something is go goes wrong. Uh, what are the cons? Uh, the system itself is not able to notify uh, you or send any errors to Zabbix or any system. So, no error handling mechanism. Uh, not enough debugging information. I'd say yes if you you really have to write it uh, yourself. The log file is a must-have in this system. And uh, the main concern is that uh, it's unable to run multiple scenarios concurrently. Because if you run one script, then uh, mouse and keyboard is used by one script. It opens some windows, does some uh, things, and if you at the same time uh, run another script, it will try to <laughs> to steal the controls and and the system will not understand what's going on and you will not get the uh, data or anything. So uh, I thought, uh, what could I do about it? We thought that uh, it would be interesting to make some interfaces between scripts uh, to let them uh, notify each other in what state each script is, um, if uh, some of controls are used or something or we could uh, write some uh, master program which will uh, run as a daemon and uh, take uh, care of those scripts and manage them. Uh, that's what we did. Uh, I called uh, this uh, master program uh, wrapper because it wraps all the scripts. Well, the main duties of this uh, system would be uh, to handle the list of executables and autoid scripts what we want to run as tests. Uh, to set executing fre frequency, like in Zabbix, we need to run these uh, tests uh, time by time uh, and uh, run these scripts ex exclusively so there is no collisions between uh, a few, uh, another between uh, scripts and, uh, and and basically there is there is possibility to run a few scripts at a time because um, you can switch between windows and do different things in uh, one window, switch to another window, do uh, another things, but uh, it's too complicated. We really wanted to keep it simple. Uh, so any, everybody, every operator at our um, office would understand what's going on. So uh, as well as it has to run as Windows service, so it's uh, kind of uh, obfuscated from everybody. It just runs as a normal service. It should uh, have a de uh, debug information. Uh, one uh, thing that uh, is must have is scheduling. So we can turn off executing of some scripts, uh, let's say during the night, because uh, some systems are not working at night. Uh, and yeah, we have to write the log file. So the wrapper, uh, we uh, set up the same, um, same pilot system, but this time with the wrapper. And uh, this is how it looks like. So the, basically, uh, the core is the same. We have auto script running application and uh, using Zabbix sender to send data to Zabbix uh, server. And uh, then the administrators and help desk, they're just watching those graphs and uh, et cetera. But what's the interesting thing here is that we have wrapper. Wrapper parent is the main uh, process, which is like a daemon running as a either or service or, uh, or uh, uh, or batch file, it loads a uh, wrapper configuration file when we, where we configure all the scripts that we have to run. And then, uh, then that's it. Error handling scripts which are uh, sending, uh, oh, that, there's the interesting thing, which are sending uh, some entries to log file as well as they are print screening the screen with the error and sending this uh, link to this screen to uh, operators and administrators and they uh, can really see what happened at the moment when uh, some system failed. Uh, this is interesting. So, uh, the key features. We are executing scripts exclusively, having scheduling, uh, the same as Zabbix. We set the date, uh, days of the week and time when we want to schedule multiple schedules, scheduled periods per each script. Let's say we want to run the one program, test one program uh, during the working hours once per five minutes and uh, during the night once per hour, we can do it here. 
just uh, set the scheduling two lines uh, in config configuration file, each for each time, and uh, set the frequency. This is what we can do. Um, we can execute uh, any command, not only auto scripts. We can, uh, what, uh, where I used it, I uh, send, let's say, I test uh, one system during the day, during the work time. During the night, I'm not test, uh, uh, testing it. So what happens in a graph? We have this uh, kind of ugly line all over the weekend, let's say, or the night, and uh, it doesn't look good. I wanted to send the, uh, I, I wanted to, it to look like daytime is like graph, then we go to zero, 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 and then we start again. So I just uh, schedule in the script uh, Zabbix sender command, which sends at the end of the day zero to Zabbix, and at the start of the day zero to Zabbix. And we got the, these beautiful graphs without uh, some ugly lines all over it. So here's the, at the bottom, uh, example of the script, if you can see it, you cannot see it. Okay. What's there? There is a, it's kind of Zabbix uh, uh, user parameter, parameter. What we have here is like, we, we write uh, uh, that uh, this is the user parameter equals the host name is the name of the host which uh, will uh, get the information in the Zabbix uh, server on the Zabbix side, uh, as well as metric name. The next is the executable, which we want to call uh, the testing script. The next is uh, frequency. Next one is uh, timeout. How long we waiting uh, uh, that uh, uh, our script uh, finishes. Uh, and the next one is scheduling. That's it. Really easy. So this is how the wrapper flowchart looks. Again, it's really easy. Uh, if you want to write it in C, let's say, what was my uh, initial idea? I wrote it in Perl. Uh, then I thought when we are ready for production, I'll, I will rewrite it to, into C or C++. But uh, as a previous, uh, kind of previous guy told that we are all scripting and nobody is writing C, except Zabbix team, of course. <laughs> so I kept it uh, in Perl because the wrapper is not the narrow point here. Uh, the scripts themselves are running really long. Uh, the wrapper, he's like, I don't know, he's mostly idling, so there is no use for optimizing it or rewriting in C. So, uh, about Linux. Linux uh, has a s tool called Dogtail. It's basically the auto it just for Linux. It's even uh, better because it has uh, uh, capability of uh, recording and replaying uh, script. You can really, you don't have even to write script. You can start the uh, program uh, and click where you want. It saves it uh, and you can replay it. Uh, there is uh, as well one tool called LDTP. I believe it's a Linux desktop testing project or something. And it has equivalent in Windows. I haven't tested it yet, but it's inter it would be interesting to look what we can do uh, with this. So, uh, what, what's the gain of all this pain? Uh, so, the benefits, um, it depends on our fantasy. I don't know if uh, you know what, uh, who, who are guys from it software when they were developing Doom game. Uh, Carmack wrote a Doom engine and uh, the other stuff like uh, uh, level developers and uh, gameplay developers, they, they were still stuck in this, uh, uh, in this uh, Wolfenstein uh, kind of uh, gameplay. So the first Doom levels looked exactly like the Wolfenstein, like 90 degree walls, no sh uh, shadowing, nothing, no 3D uh, leveling, etc. Uh, so. At the moment, uh, my monitoring implemented the end user monitoring is the same Wolfenstein level because I basically monitor the things I could write uh, kind of in uh, queries, etc. But uh, I'm, tr I'm really trying hard because there, uh, there are no limits for this kind of monitoring. Okay, I'm running out of time. Let's see the, the two examples. That's it. First example revealed that uh, there are problems with one of our VM servers. Uh, nobody noticed it, not admi administrators, not end users, because uh, uh, the performance uh, dropping uh, between one server, what, what happened here? Uh, 
we migrated from one VM server to another. And this is, a, this is not a dropping of performance, it's gaining. Kind of uh, less milliseconds used to run the script. And here again, we try to migrate back, back and uh, we understood that something's wrong with this server and uh, it was, uh, I'm not sure what was wrong with configuration, but Windows guys know. So uh, basically we, we are getting like five seconds per 20 applications. Uh, let's say five times a day they are run by users. Let's say 500 employees use those programs and uh, in a year uh, they use those programs 250 days for five years. It's like 10 years saved just, we didn't know we lose this time. So it's kind of interesting that we see things we couldn't see before. Uh, example two, it's kind of interesting, non-standard. Uh, I sub, uh, set up uh, the webcam uh, and started to monitor the time and date in the corner. It's kind of, I, I can catch the situations when the webcam hangs up. Uh, I kind of try to use this end user monitoring ways. The other kind of monitoring is, is not possible to implement those things. So basically, that's it. <laughs> question session, if any. And I'm, I believe I'm out of time, so less questions, the better. But I'm ready to answer if... Uh, Hello. Question is regarding uh, auto IT software, yeah? Uh, what are you doing in case of two-factor authentication? For example, if you need to put not only password, but maybe code from calculator or let's uh, say to test to test internet banking. Uh, about internet banking, we are testing from uh, internet only. If uh, that tells you something, if if it's uh, if it's not no, just I, username and password. I mean, for example, not only username and password, but uh, code from code calculator. Or I mean. Okay. Two-factor authentication. Yes, yes. Uh, well, you just have to think about it. You can write down all the codes, but it's not the best practice. Uh, uh, you can call the some functions and get the information from database, but again, how how to implement it? Uh, like those codes would uh, be saved in database or something. Um, but uh, I'm sure you can do it. Uh, it's it's kind of no problem. Uh, just uh, you have to be concerned about security because you cannot uh, save those codes in plain text. And uh, basically, if you if you uh, trust your administrator who, or end operator who uh, administers these machines, you can save them plain text. But uh, I wouldn't recommend. Basically, uh, there are things that uh, you really have to sometimes sit down and think how to implement this. But uh, all I've uh, thought about, I just somehow I figure out what to do, because uh, basically it's simulating you. Just uh, imagine what you would do, I don't know, like <laughs> scan in your card and use some, I don't know, it's, okay, I cannot uh, imagine the good answer now, but I will research, it's a good question. 